Hey everyone, this is Mark Lynch. I'm out here in Lincoln, Nebraska at Salt Creek, getting ready to measure this discharge here behind me. As you can see, I've got the RQ pod and the M9 with me today. And I wanted to talk to you about compass, right? So I'm out here uh, getting ready to measure discharge. And so one of the first things that we want to do is calibrate the compass. And that is distinctly different than the GPS that you see up on top of the M9. The GPS tells the M9 where it's located at in the world, but it does not tell it which direction it's facing, okay? The M9 has an internal compass that it uses to know which direction out of the 360 degrees it is facing at any given time, and that also helps the M9 to know what direction the water is flowing beneath it. Here in the Midwest, usually water flows just in one direction, but where we have bi-directional flow or tidally influenced sites, water might be going more than one direction beneath the same M9 unit at the same time. So that's what we wanna talk about today. Um, we wanna make sure that we are doing a compass calibration of the M9 before we get it out and start collecting data with it. That way the data, the velocities that it sees will be corrected in the correct orientation uh, based on that compass. And so I went ahead and did a compass calibration um, a little bit different than normal, right? So uh, you might have been told or you might your understanding might be to take everything out of your pockets, right? Your keys, your, your phones, right? your wallets, everything. Um, and that's important, um, especially if you happen to have a, an exo magnet or maybe in this case, the RQ pod magnet tool right here to arm and disarm the, the rotors, right? Um, and so I did a compass calibration I took everything out of my pockets with the exception of that uh, RQ pod arming magnet. And so I wanna show you what happened in that situation. So hang on just a second here. All right, so as you can see, I did this compass calibration. I went two full rotations all the way around, right? Up and down, pitch and roll left and right, rotating it around. And what you'll see is that I, I did a pretty decent job of covering most of the areas for pitch and roll. I covered all the directions for rotation here. But what you notice is that it says, this is not acceptable, right? Um, you see over here a wide variance in the dark blue line to the, the smaller, lighter blue line. What we want is for that blue line to be as close as possible to the black circle all the way around. Now, there's more than one possible reason for this issue in this compass calibration, right? It could be from that magnet tool. It could also be from the fact that there's six different power lines overhead. It could also be from the fact that there's a bridge nearby, right? All of those ferrous um, or magnetic um, things could cause issues with the compass calibration. And so the best thing to do in this situation is to uh, stop the compass calibration, hit OK down here in the lower right corner, and then repeat that calibration in a better spot. So get rid of any magnetic tools or anything that you have, get uh, rid of any other uh, ferrous objects, small hand tools, wrenches, pliers, anything like that. And you also want to be as close to the water that you're going to be measuring as possible. So even me up here on top of a levee, I really want to be down in the water or right at the water surface to do this compass calibration as close as possible to where we're going to be collecting data. All right, so I just finished completing a second compass calibration on the same M9 unit and RQ pod that I was using before. The only difference between the last one and this one is that I took that magnet tool out of my pocket and kept it in the vehicle here. So as you can see, first off, magnetic influence is acceptable. That's good, right? Our error from the calibration is much, much smaller. And we can see that the blue line is laying basically right on top of that black line. Now I've still missed a few pieces here and there in the pitch and roll, but uh, the water is relatively flat. And we're trying to talk about today issues with that compass calibration itself. So um, wanted to show you this, right? And so based on this, we might be ready to go out and take a measurement, get, get this water measured before it goes up or down or, or anything else.